people who were almost murdered, what's your story? I was a freshman in college and, in my first semester, pledged a fraternity. One night, I was assigned to work the door at a party. Around 1.30 to 2 a.m., a group of guys that worked at the dining hall showed up and each paid $5 per cup. A few minutes after they paid, the last keg kicked and none of them got any beer. As soon as they told me that the kegs just kicked, I started counting out cash to pay them back for the cups that they bought. Before I could get them their money back, one of my drunk pledge brothers decided to physically force them out the door while yelling slash shit talking them. As soon as I could calm my buddy down I went outside to give them their cash back, only to be met with a big, big surprise. When I made it down the back steps, cheesesteak guy aggressively steps forward and says y'all made a big ducking mistake. I'm strapped as a mother ducker, pulls a handgun out of his waistband and points it directly between my eyes. In that moment, it was remarkable that 18-year-old me didn't piss his pants immediately. A few of the older guys in the house stepped outside and were able to talk the guy down without incident, but it felt like I had that gun pointed between my eyes for an eternity. Long story short, I was incredibly lucky that I didn't get shot that night. Needless to say, I went without cheesesteaks for a few semesters after that night. So I was backpacking in South America and was getting a bus between cities in Brazil. As you may know night buses are routinely robbed and I was unlucky enough to be on a bus at this time. Being the only foreign person on the bus they obviously rinsed me dry. Passport, cash, phone all gone. I was then locked in the luggage compartment till they had left the scene. All while having a gun pointed at me. Now that sucked. What sucked even more was a week later when I was getting another bus and it was robbed again. Again they and straight to the only foreign person on the bus who didn't speak Portuguese and demanded all the stuff the previous robbers stole off me. I was pretty much crying with a gun in my face as I had nothing to give them. They took me outside the bus and I thought for sure I was going to be killed but again they locked me in the luggage compartment while they robbed everyone else. I booked flights from then onwards. When I was in high school, a random new kid started stalking me. Like following me home from school, I'd see him outside my house, he'd stand by my locker at school. He was weird. Told my counselor but they didn't really believe me. Told a teacher I was close with and he talked to the principal. They said they'd watch out, after about a week my boyfriend was pissed the school wasn't helping me. He confronted this kid and they almost physically fought. Finally, he got kicked out of school and about a month later, less than three miles from my house. He strangled a girl my age, who also went to my school, and dumped her body in a field. This is my aunt's story but it's too good to not share. My aunt was almost killed by the famous serial killer Michael Swango, the killer doctor. She worked as a unit secretary at the ward he worked in regularly and they knew each other well. Part of his routine was poisoning people he worked with and he admitted, after he was caught. He was planning on killing her but his co-workers got suspicious of him and he left town before he had the chance. I was 13 years old. My friend and I were out skateboarding and for some reason this one woman got really angry that we skated on the sidewalk in front of her house. She began screaming incoherently and we just laughed it off and kept going. My friend went one way and I went another. A minute later. I am still just riding on the sidewalk to get back to my house when all of a sudden the woman yelling from before pulls up beside me in her car and starts screaming again. Full disclosure, I replied with some expletives and told her to get away. I continued riding and she just drove slowly beside me while continuing to scream. The woman eventually drove off but then she did a U-turn and came back towards me. I expected her to just pass by and go home but then I noticed she was actually driving directly at me. I froze and just watched her car come at me. Eventually my brain decided I had to move. It was literally like a movie and I dove away just as the car drove over where I was standing. I don't know her exact speed but if I had to guess it was 30 to 40 miles per hour she just continued driving and I sprinted home. She was later arrested and plead guilty to assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. A mentally ill kid in my school stalked me for a week and made plans to kill me. He said it was cause I made fun of him turns out he thought I was someone else. So there's that. The teacher said the video footage was creepy. I'd be walking down the halls and he was behind me, just staring. His plan was to put a shank in my neck. A teacher caught him before he stabbed me and I remember the kid left in police cuffs. I was working at a gas station. It was at night and slow, so I was sitting in the office watching TV. All of a sudden, one guy comes in behind me. Another guy comes in in front of me. 
Guy in front says don't get up. I give him the wad of cash from my breast pocket, and then the money from my front pocket. They rush out back into the darkness. I stay put, just like the guy said. Then I call the owner. A car pulls up to get gas. I tell them they need to pay by credit card or exact change because I just got robbed. Then I reach up to touch my neck. It was bloody. The guy in back was holding a knife to my throat. I've told this before but I witnessed a murder directly in front of me while I was sitting in my jeep with the top down. Two guys were arguing on the sidewalk. I was just sitting there. They knew I was there and didn't care. One guy pulled out a homemade shag from his pant leg and straight armed it into the other guy's eye. I will never forget the crunching sound when that blade went into his face. The murderer looked at me once and bolted. I ran up to help but the guy was ducked. Blood spouting out of his eye and gushes and he was moaning horribly. He died as the ambulance arrived. I was the only witness and nearly testified in court but the guy pleaded guilty and got 15 to 25 years. Still have nightmares about that 25 years later. My ex-stepfather is bipolar. After my mom left him, he had another manic episode. He broke in and pulled a gun on us. Told me to go to my room and not to call the police. I was 11. I called the police. When they pulled up he shot through the door to my bedroom and emptied the clip. I had already grabbed my cat and was outside under the deck. I am just glad he shot the door and not my mom. My half-sister was born later that year. At her funeral he showed up and kept trying to talk to me. He couldn't understand why I refused. He was never charged and has no memory of the incident. He spent a weekend at a mental hospital and then was released to go to work. As a teacher. I don't understand how all this was ignored and he was considered an upstanding teacher in person. Was out one night with friends. An acquaintance was being super creepy, following me around all night, and generally giving me bad vibes. I had one friend offer to distract him while another walked me out to my car. Totally took them up on that. The next day I heard he ended up killing the guy that distracted him. I'm never living that one down. I feel like if I had not agreed to let him distract the guy things would have gone very differently. For better, or worse I do not know, but my friend might be alive still. Nobody blames me for it. Dude was crazy. It's just that what if I did something differently thing that runs through my mind. Survivor's guilt maybe. I was in an abusive relationship that I couldn't find a way out of. I had done something to upset him, I think he didn't like the shoes I was wearing that day. So he tried to throw me out of the third story window. Luckily his roommate stepped in when he heard the glass break. It was the one and only time he did anything, but I think I would have died that night if not for him. I was pretty cut up but I didn't splat. Teenage me and my two friends went to hang out at a big local park. The rumor was that the street across from the park driveway had a haunted house at the end. We decided to investigate. The little street ended at a straight driveway covered by trees overhead. We pull in the end and start to look around, then, a dude in full clan robes with what looked like a big shotgun starts from the other end of the driveway, walking with real purpose. Fastest 20 point turn I've ever done. Found out in some local online boards later than the local clan used that abandoned house as a meeting place, and that guy was probably the guard slash lookout. I've told this before but when I was a kid, probably around second grade, our house got robbed and my mom and I came home while it was in progress. For whatever reason, she decided to go in and interrupt them. She grabbed her gun, didn't shoot, yelled at them to get the duck out of my house and then we drove off in a hurry to the corner store to call the cops, this was before cell phones. Less than two weeks later, my mom and I are sitting in the living room on the couch, our backs to the front door. Someone drives by and fires about six or eight shots into the front of our house. Thank God for a steel front door. The cops came and said they didn't think the two incidents were related. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.